Hi there, Simon here from Empirical Health, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about Guizhou. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to talk about what Guizhou is and what Guizhou isn't. So I'm going to discuss that through the preparations of Guizhou's technique, how you make it, how you grow it, how it's harvested, etc., etc., um, and give you a little bit of a quality discernment overview. So it's a very clearly a very very important herb to understand at depth because uh, from the classics of Chinese medicine, so from the Shan Han Lun and the Jing Wei Yao Wei, uh, out of the 294 formulas in those texts, it is used 79 times in those formula in those um, in, in those formulas. So uh, you know it's over a quarter of the formulas. So clearly very very important to understand. So in the world, uh, botanically, there are four main species that are used of, of cinnamon in, in, as, a, uh, as a genus. So the four species are um, uh, Verum, the Bur uh, Burmanii, Laurieri, and Cinnamon Cassia. So it's the Cinnamon Cassia that we refer to when we're talking about the Cassia that we use in Chinese medicine. And the reason that is, well, one of the reasons that is, it's because of the coumarin content in the bark. So the coumarin content, coumarin helps to break down our blood glucose levels, and if we use it, if we compare it to uh, formulas that have that similar functions, you know, um, things like Shenchi One and the way it acts against uh, get, acts, um, to assist people who have diabetes, then we can look at those that as being a, a relevant component of it. So it's obviously combined with other ingredients, like Mudan P, which also has the same similar action and honey, which does the same thing in terms of breaking down blood glucose for, for, for diabetes. So, <clears throat> you know, Guizhou itself is, uh, it, it goes back into history with very interesting, um, almost biblical references. You know, it says things like, uh, Cassia is a potent wolf, and uh, wood that invades Cassia will wither, um, sticking a nail of wood made of Cassia into a tree will kill it dead. Um, and uh, and in the the Fu Xing Jue Zhangfu uh, Yong Yao Fa Yao, written by Tao Hong Qing, he says that acrid flavors belong to wood and Gui governs them. So it's a very interesting thing. This Gui, um, he doesn't say Gui Pi, excuse me, Gui Zhu, uh, Ruo Gui, Gui Xin, Jun Gui, Mu Gui, etc., etc. He says Gui. So. When we start to look at this, we see how it's broken down over his, over time. So originally it was Gui, and then we kind of divided into two parts, Jun Gui and Mu Gui, um, and then it was further divided into subcategories, so Ruo Gui, Gui Zhu, and Gui Xin, that we might be familiar with today. We might be more familiar with just Gui Zhu and, and Ruo Gui, but there's also Gui Xin. So that's Xin as in the heart, so the heart of Gui, the heart of Cassia. So Tao Hong Qing and, and Zhang Jun Jing were were very very well aware of the varying actions with these particular for, with these particular um, variations of the same species, and there's numerous mentions of of how they applied those therapeutically throughout the history of Chinese medicine. And one of the things that they said was very interesting, you know, when they talked about um, the preparation was. You know, to understand the techniques, um, you know, it's very, very important. You know, we can't go and say that, uh, you know, such and such a formula doesn't work. Like a lot of people say, you know, Guizhou tongue doesn't work because for whatever reason. But, you know, if you're not employing the proper techniques that were mentioned, then it's no surprise that they're not working for you. So, you know, those the simple, simple ideas of, of the correct method, um, the correct ratio of herbs. So that's, you know, when you convert Liang, you know, dose, piece, um, a shit, you know, measurement, etc., etc., and and the and the way that you cooked it in the first place, but more importantly is the actual herb itself, right? <clears throat> so we can't really expect it to work if we don't have any of those three, let alone uh, sorry, one of those three, let alone all of those three, um, out of out of whack to get to get the expectations of what was written about in the classics. Um, so Zhang Tun Jing mentions this concept and this preparation technique called a QP, right? So to remove remove the peel or remove the bark. Now all the the Shan Han Lun formulas um, and and almost uh, around about half the Jingwei formulas mention this at the end of Guizhou, as they do with gun cell. You know, what gun cell they mix fried, um, uh, you know, fruits are blast fried, etc., etc. So Guizhou it says uh, QP, right? Remove peel. So um, it, 
what does this actually mean and, uh, and, and, and how is it done? Um, and, and do we employ it today in, in Australia, for example, or in the Western world? Um, so I did a, a, an extensive amount of research on this and um, when you prepare um, the, the peel of cassia, you do it in certain ways. So uh, if you'd like to continue listening, please do, and um, I'll go over all those preparation techniques and, and how it's um, harvested. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.